right? Okay, manufacturers typically, uh, they recommend 5 to 10 percent water bypass. And the reason for that is this ball valve is what restricts the water flow on the bypass when you press the trigger. But you don't want the ball valve to hammer against the seat constantly because what it does, it produces this kind of wear and tear. They, they screw it right here. Yeah, and if you notice uh, nozzles, in, uh, particularly when you go to higher pressures, uh, relatively low volumes, you know, they're very small uh -huh. in diameter. Yeah. What it means is every time you have a groove like this, this is an enormous opening when you think about it all the way around it. Okay, yeah. You can see that this spans all the way around, and it could have been that the position of the ball, because the ball would tend to rotate sometimes, uh, it was okay until finally this group find, uh, finally, you know, was facing uh, the seat. Okay. So when it comes against the seat, it still allows a lot of water on my pants. That's basically what we're experiencing because if the spring tension wasn't reset, in other words, if you don't loosen the tension in the spring, uh -huh. and then this happens, and that's the only that's explanation. The, only okay. the other thing that could happen is if you have a piece of trash, they get stuck between this. Uh, it yeah, it it they'll lodge the it thing. and then it'll be exactly the same effect. Okay. However, when we opened this up, there was nothing to be seen. I mean, we carefully right. opened it. I don't notice any trash. I mean, we could still try it in case there was something or we dislodge it in the process of opening it up. Okay. But there's a good possibility that uh, this grip right ball. here, yeah, I'll probably rotate it back in the, the wrong position where it actually has all that water, you know, to, to be on my pass. Okay. But uh, typically, uh, when you have a uh, downstream injection, uh, the way it works is the pressure drops to nearly nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have, uh, when you release the trigger gun, you know, then you have a hammering effect. Okay, because by why does it hammer down with no... Well, because uh, the way the motor works is when you release the trigger, okay. uh, pressure builds up, it's a, what they call a pilot effect. Uh, on top of this uh, stem, you have a passageway right here. You have a check valve. Okay. When you release the trigger gun, water ceases to flow. Okay. So the pressure builds up and it puts uh, pressure on top of this uh, piece right here okay. and it forces the valve down to go on bypass. And then the when that, opening right. bypass. And what holds it, the valve open and uh, without reset, I mean, uh, 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 how could I say, pressure up again, is this check valve holds the pressure on the line. Okay. If you notice uh, the way pressure actually on motor works, you have an operating pressure, let's say 3,000 psi. When you release a trigger gun, the pressure typically will climb 3, 400 psi, depending. Okay. When that pressure uh, crosses a threshold, it's based on the tension you have on the spring, then it forces this piston to open up on the bypass. When the bypass opens up, the pressure suddenly drops, but this check valve goes against the seat holding the pressure. Because okay. uh, it's, it's held by uh, a weak spring, and then it holds the pressure on the hose, and through that passage right here, it holds the pressure at, like I said, the standard pressure might be like 33, 3400 psi. Okay. And that holds it, this piston, on this plunger, down, holding this check valve open. Okay. When you release the trigger and the pressure drops, then suddenly this retracts, caused by the spring tension on this stem, which is a spring of uh, the window. Right here. So the spring forces it back against, and this, of course, you know, it goes back against the seat. Okay. And then uh, slowly the pressure builds up again. And then you have your normal 3,000 psi. Okay. Anywhere I tear on this ball valve, we cause water to be bypassed. And since on a machine's already like 3,005 gallons, if you notice the orifice is very small. So it doesn't take very much of a groove being cut into this ball to, to produce yeah. the effect of a, of a nozzle, you know. In other words, so you're bypassing quite a bit of water because this uh, valve no longer produces an effective seal. Okay, and it and then, makes then, it, right? Yeah, I mean, there are kits, you can replace these ball valves in the, in the seat, and then basically you're restoring. The only problem I noticed is, for some reason, when you do that, uh, they don't uh, last quite as long as, you know, when you put it in. Okay. Even though this is, uh, these are the crucial elements, huh. you know, for that kind of problem. Okay. And, uh, and that's about it. The only other problem you may have on an unloader, typically, pressure actually on unloaders are relatively simple, is when you have this uh, uh, check valve, mm -hmm. which is like a bullet shape with a seal. Right if back. it fails, or the seal wears out, or if it's gone, 
then we release a trigger gun, it works like a pressure, I mean, a, a, a pressure regulated valve. So instead of unloading, we release a trigger, then it, it goes on bypass, but under high pressure. You press the trigger, and that tells you immediately that you have a problem with this valve. Sometimes this valve is stuck in the open position, because okay. a little piece of trash or, you know, holds it open. Okay. So then when you release the trigger, instead of seeing the engine, uh, you know, going on a, on a light load, yeah, you can hear the sound. Yeah. It's still struggling, you know, you can see it's under it's low. Still high pressure. Yeah, what happens is it's bypassing by working like uh, a pressure regulator valve, which is not good because it maintains a high load on your pump and uh, also keeps the engine working when the time where, you know, when you're on bypass, you don't need that kind of situation. Okay, yeah. So that's, that's what makes the difference between what is called an unloader valve and a pressure regulator valve. Okay. In essence, they work the same. If you remove this check valve right here, this automatically becomes a pressure regulated valve. Meaning it always will have high pressure. You release a trigger gun and then it'll bypass at a slightly higher pressure. Okay. But that's the way it's going to work. If you have this check valve right here, the way an unloader is intended to work, then it relieves all the pressure pretty much, or most of the pressure from the head of the pump. So it goes from 3,000 PSI to maybe 160, 70 PSI really? bypass. Huh. Until you press the trigger again, then the cycle begins again. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it typically works. That's interesting. So, Alrighty. Uh, Alrighty. Well, I guess that's it as far as uh, pressure action. Now, the uh, flow action and loaders are a different ball game. We don't like them because they tend to be a little more finicky, you know, they tend to have some issues. They would be ideal if they were reliable, but uh, they are very sensitive to fluctuations in flow and sometimes it cause. Uh, and intended uh, Yeah, those K7 flow actuated unloaders are extremely yeah, popular. Yeah, actuated unloaders yep. are more straightforward. They're more user friendly. Uh, for the most part, they're simpler, and therefore, you know, they're more trustworthy, like everything else in life. All right. That's going to be Fred Ramondo with our washers and our customer Matthew Tanyachi with Sunny Pressure Washing. Thank you all for watching the video.